In Jesus' name, amen. A number of years ago, I was present for the dedication of the church building. As you can imagine, it was a glorious occasion for this congregation, along with their pastor. For years, really, they'd worked tirelessly, planning, consulting, discussing, disagreeing, raising support and finding financing, and finally on agreeing on the details of this new space designed to accommodate this growing and diverse congregation. I'd not seen the building, didn't even see it when it was under construction, so the first inkling I had about this building was when I got there for the dedicatory service. It was gorgeous. Great care had been taken in the design, and in its simplicity and focus, it drew people into worship. And more importantly, the cross of Christ was at the center of their gathering space because it's the center of their life as it is of yours. When I entered the sanctuary that day, I also noted that the baptismal font was more than a font. It was huge and it was right in the entrance to the church, three steps down into a pool of water with a font next to it water flowing all the time. It was one of the biggest baptismal fonts that I'd ever seen. A person couldn't miss it. You had to walk around it to get in. And this flowing water and hearing that during worship was a constant reminder of everyone's baptism. After the service, I had the privilege to meet the architect for that building and I complimented the architect and how beautiful and wonderful the space was. And then I mentioned that uh, I found the baptismal font to be particularly moving. I discovered he was a member of the nearby Episcopal church in town. And when I commented to him on the baptismal font, he said this, we wanted to make the font big enough to die in. He told me he was quoting someone else and I've never taken the, I don't remember who he was quoting and I'd never taken the time to look that up. But it's the first time I'd heard it. And it was a surprise to me. It kind of took me back because every time I'd thought about baptism, I always thought about new life. But he talked about dying in baptismal waters. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized he was right. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Since that day, I've never been in a church building without looking at the baptismal font and wondering if it's big enough to die in. We don't know much about these Greeks who met Jesus in today's gospel reading. We do know, however, that they were in Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover and that they'd heard about Jesus. They were Gentiles, perhaps people who come to the Jewish faith or were curious about the Jewish faith and they were there for the observance of Passover. But we do know that when they found Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, they said they wanted to see Jesus. Every time I read that text, I'm taken by the request of them wanting to see Jesus and wonder, what exactly were they asking? I think it's quite possible they wanted to be spectators. They had heard the wonderful things that Jesus had done, and they wanted to see Jesus heal a man born blind, raise a dead man from the grave like he'd just done in the previous chapter in the raising of Lazarus. They wanted to see Jesus change water into wine, teach with authority like he did to Nicodemus, make the lame walk, clean out the temple like he'd done in a previous text. 
They wanted to see this man act with such authority. This Jesus had become quite a spectacle. And there were a lot of people that wanted to see him. Not just these Greeks, I imagine. But Jesus wouldn't let that happen. In his response, he talks about his death and uses the example of a seed that is planted in the ground and in his way of understanding, it dies so that it can bring forth new life and bear much fruit. That's an appropriate text for us to read at this season of the year. When we see the roots and the seeds of the earth spring to life, and begin to bear flowers, fruits, and grain. And Jesus was pointing to his impending death and to his resurrection when he would draw all people to himself, including these Greeks. Jesus' arms would be opened wide to welcome these Greeks, these natives of Jerusalem, and you. Today we're accustomed to being spectators. Many of you are watching basketball until you've seen way too much basketball this weekend. We're spectators of political and international events. Wars fought a half a world away are on our screens immediately. We're spectators of glorious public interest and we're spectators on tragedies that occur nearby and far away, and we're spectators from the comfort of our easy chairs. And it's easy for us to turn our faith into something that's that we're just spectators. With a remote in hand, we can turn it on and off, move to another channel, go to another place of interest, that even gets translated into the church. We can watch it as long as we're satisfied and entertained. But Jesus will have none of that. He went to the cross for us, gave up his life for us, so that in his rising he could call you to himself. And by our baptisms, we follow Jesus in dying to self and rising to be with Christ forever. This new life that we have in Christ consists of forgiveness, not revenge, of love, not hate, of community, not individuality, of generosity, not selfishness, of service, not insistence on our own way, of calm in the midst of a storm and assurance that even in the midst of a pandemic, Christ is with us. And in our baptisms, we die with him. And by his power, we are raised to new life with him. And so the architect was right. The Greeks were called not just to be spectators, but participants. And in this season of Lent, now entering its final days, we too are called to be participants, to die to self, and to arise with Christ. And so this week, the question we want to ask is, how am I different because I'm baptized? These are the questions that Jesus asks us to consider during these final weeks of Lent as we approach Holy Week and Easter. And as we and other churches begin to regather in person, we receive again the precious gift of a face-to-face -face community of believers who walk with us in faith, who walk with us in life, and stand by us and stand with us as signs of Jesus' love and presence. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. 
Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law in our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. And give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feeling unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying, and all who grieve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. We give thanks for the presence of your spirit and love during these months of separation. Be with us now as we regather for worship. Give us patience, wisdom, joy, and love during this transition. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words and wor to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into everlasting life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <coughs> Serve the Lord.